it was back in 2015, um, doing, do, having a normal day's work, um, taking care of patients, had some critically ill patients, and I had a patient that had overdosed on some Tylenol. And we were uh, working on getting a line to give her knack. And she was sleepy in the morning, but had woken up and was, we were having a fairly normal day. We were feeding her. She was ambulatory. How old was she? Uh, low 30s. Low 30s. Yeah, low 30s. You know, where I, where I work, we had a, someone sitting on the patient because it was an overdose. And minimal, minimal psych history before that point. Mm. Um, just kind of the normal stuff that you see on a lot of people's charts that come through. So sit there, really status post suic suicidal yeah. attempt ingestion, mm -hmm. getting the knack or teeing up for the knack. Absolutely, yeah. yes. And so acetyl uh, cysteine. That's correct, yep. yeah. For those who don't know. And, um, you know, it was l earlier in the day. There was a couple events that happened. Um, first being she got upset about us stealing her cell phone, quote unquote, but we found it in her covers and her in her bed. Um, went out of the way, did everything I could to keep her calm and happy, charged the phone for her, which isn't a standard policy for us. Um, thought she was doing okay. Everything turned out, was, was doing fine throughout the afternoon. And the officer that was sitting on her said, hey, Jimmy, come down here. I think she's trying to get out of the bed. And I said, okay, no problem. Started walking down there and went into the room and said, hey, like, if you need to get up to the bathroom, that's fine. Just let me know. I need to unhook this, you know, IV because I don't want it to pull out because we had trouble getting it in. Was this a police officer? It was a security, security type, type person. Sitter. Yeah. Yeah, like at the bedside. And so <laughs> the second I touched the tubing of the IV to, to unhook it, um, I got punched twice in, in the side of the head, wow. really hard, and uh, did not expect that at all. Yeah. And the officer was great, jumped on her to get her off me, but as he took her to the bed, down to the bed, he was on top of her arms, and that leverage effect yeah. got me, because I unfortunately had on a um, lanyard with my name badge and a stethoscope around my neck. So basically, I was, you I were was Jacob setting, compliant. Yeah. <laughs> I was setting myself up to get strangled at that point. Wow. And so she had my stethoscope and lanyard extremely hard as we went down to the bed. And I realized very fast that she was trying to hurt me. And uh, it, it was, it, everything slowed down where I could just feel my heart rate. Um, and I said, hey, you're, you're hurting me, stop. And she, she had some choice words um, for me. She said, good, I don't effing care. I hope you effing die. And she called me a C word. C word. I've never been called a C word before. But I have, but yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> with good cause. Wow. Yeah, so then I really knew she was trying to kill me. And so I grabbed her wrist. I was trying to, you know, get her to release and everything was just tightening even more to the wow. point that my stethoscope a Lippman snapped in half. What? I, yes. That is really yes. hard to do. Yeah. Believe me, I've tried to break my stethoscope. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, I, so she pulled it in half it was that, and my lanyard was getting tighter and she was clawing me with her fingernails at this point. So I'm starting to kind of gray out. I started feeling oh like God. I was going to pass out and I was like, I got to do something fast. Well, where's homeboy the sitter? Um, he's on top of her right, still, but he doesn't know what. But he, he doesn't, doesn't realize that the leverage is getting me. That she's basically right. Killing he you, thinks yeah. he thinks that he's keeping her under control, but really, I'm I'm down on on my knees at this point, and so I ended up getting my shirt off and my my lanyard over the top of my head, and that's what kind of freed me up. And he was trying to get out on the radio for backup, but every time he tried to get out, the radio wasn't getting out. And uh, finally, some random lady walking down the hallway was like, I think this guy's getting attacked. And, and, and uh, wow. then everybody came running. But I got my shirt off, got my lanyard off. And as I was turning, I still got kicked twice in the head. So I ended up in the middle of the hallway with shirtless, badgeless, stethoscopeless, gasping for air, pain in you know, my airway. And all I could think about was getting over to the next room because I had a dilt bolus going off oh on a pump. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, so wow. that, so it doesn't stop there. What? It doesn't stop there. Because already I'm like, you managed to get shirtless in the ER. Right, right. Right, you're already <laughs> ahead of me on every level. Right. Like I've tried, I can't do it. This is terrifying. Yeah, it's, and, and so we thought it was pretty cut and dry that we could press charges on this because in my state, they just, 
made a law where it's a classy felony with all these enhancements, just like it is assaulting a, a police officer gotcha. to assault a nurse or a physician or a healthcare worker in the workplace. And so we press charges. Um, and we meaning you. Yes. Got it. And you know statements from the officers because right. she she assaulted uh, two or three of the cops before we were able to get her subdued oh, as, as well. Yeah. So there's multiple kind of victims, but I guess that was the main one in this one. Wow. So. And so what happened when you tried to press, when you pressed charges? <laughs> well, we finally got the warrant sworn for her arrest, you know, like 10.30 that night after my shift. She's still on a psych hold at this She's point. She's still, yeah, yeah, admitted at this yeah. point on a psych hold. Um, and every time I'd show up for court, um, there would be a, well, she's in the hospital still, or, oh, she's in a psychiatric facility. Oh, we need to wait six months for a forensic psych evaluation. And all this time, this is always prosecuted by the DA's office, right. not from a private attorney or anything like that. And they always kind of had in the back of their mind, like, oh, I don't know if this, this thing's going to stick because, you know, she's got this now psych history. And, you're, and I'm just thinking, I know a thousand percent in my mind that she was doing this intentionally. Yeah. I, knew, I knew that, you know, and it, it just, I didn't get a good feeling in it, in my, in my in myself that this was going to go well eventually. Yeah. Um, you know, they hired her, her family hired some extremely, you know, high up attorneys that were, you know, high priced lawyers that were getting involved, digging up dirt on anything that they could. And, you know, um, it finally went to a bench trial. You were on the stand. Yep, absolutely. The victim yeah. of this attack. And I felt like the, uh, the criminal the in, in, in the case. Yeah. Welcome to the U.S. Yeah. legal justice system and yeah. the, the reason we have the Silent No More campaign. But so then what happened? So even backing up just a quick second on that, the, the attorney knew the, the judge and the assistant DA that was prosecuting the case. The problem was when we went to trial, the assistant DA has a lot of cases, but yeah. when she... We were ready f for this, kind of the same thing. You're a busy guy. We hadn't done too much story prep. But when she's prosecuting, I expect her to have some more information than just, hey, tell me that quick story again, and we're going to trial. Wow. No documents, no research, no interviews, no medical charts, nothing. And it was just my word against her word with all of her attorneys saying, you know, random stuff. And, and we just... Eventually, it just got dropped, and, and the whole courtroom gasped. There was, you know, 20 police officers in there that followed me out and said, this is a travesty. I cannot believe that this was not prosecuted the way that it, it should have been. There was, there was just no prep, and it, and it kind of broke my heart. You know, I, I had some faith in our justice system, but it's just interesting that even a cut-and-dry case in my mind was just thrown out. It was wow. just an unbelievable thing. And it wasn't because they determined she was not mentally fit. Um, eventually, this, this event kind of, I guess, started a downward, downward spiral of psych history with her. Oh, and I think the judge got this chart of all this history, but most of it was after my event. Yeah. And that's what got me was, you know, just because, you know, now they have these diagnoses doesn't mean that then she, she had... had you know, competency. And you were convinced her at the time that this was all volitional, she was in her right even, mind. Even the physicians there that mm -hmm. were taking care of her were kind of in agreement, but none of them were interviewed. The, 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 even the officer that was in the room was, the other officer was subpoenaed. They, sub, they kept subpoenaing the wrong officer. Every single time we'd go to court, I said, hey, that's not the police officer that was in there. And they, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. But they never, they, they didn't, didn't get their ducks in a row. You had to take a ton of time, mm -hmm. emotional anguish, yeah, stress. Absolutely. And we were just talking before we even went on the show that you can get nervous sometimes on, yeah. in public situations. Yeah. And, and not in a code though. Not in a code. In a code, you're <laughs> on it. Yeah. But in those kind of situations, so you're putting yourself through a kind of torture right. to have this result. Why did you do it? You know, I... I really thought at the time I was taking a stand for all of us fellow nurses, EMTs, paramedics, you know, whether it be CNAs, physicians, anyone that's in, in, on the front lines. I felt like we needed to take a stand to have a precedent for, you know, these people that, you know, that just can't get away with this. And now all these other events are happening where I work 
but a lot of them don't want to press charges because, well, Jimmy got strangled, oh, punched, and kicked, wow. and attacked, but I got slapped or spit on, and nothing's going to happen, you know? Wow. So, so I feel like, you know, awareness of this isn't necessarily the, the end moment, you know? We have to keep fighting if it happens to us and say, you know what, Jimmy had this happen to him, nothing happened, but maybe for me, something will happen. Man. Man, well, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta say this. Yeah. First of all, I admire how much you took it on yourself to fight this. Because again, I right. don't think it was for you. I can tell already, talking right. to you. You're right. doing this for everybody else. Absolutely. Who's suffering on the front lines without any voice, mm -hmm. without any recourse. And I get thousands of messages from right. these people with stories. Mm -hmm. And some stories are less severe than yours. Some are Absolutely. more severe than yours. Absolutely. But every single one comes with reading between the lines, someone who was hurt yeah. and feels like they weren't heard. Right. And first of all, good will come of this because you're telling the story now. But more importantly, um, we can't let this kind of thing happen. Do you right. have a thought of what you would tell your brothers and sisters on the front lines? Yeah. Well, definitely don't wear a, a, a <laughs> lanyard with your badge. I do the little uh, pull tab the thing. Pull tab yeah. Now. And then the stethoscope thing around the neck, you're just setting yourself up for that. So and you know, now I try to keep it in my pocket if I can. Yeah. Um, you know, they have some devices that you can put it on your belt loop or whatever. I don't like those. They're flopping everywhere. But, man, that would have saved I, my neck. Can I, <laughs> can I ask? So that's good actionable advice. Right, Can right. I ask you a question? Why should we have to do that? 